Good morning guys, today is actually Friday for me. Today is one of my painting days and I figured I'd just have you guys follow along, see what I'm working on and stuff like that. Today I'm going to be jumping back and forth between a lot of new pieces that I'm starting up along with a really big one and I'm trying to get this piece actually finished. You really can't see it too well but let me see if I can move it a little bit better. It's kind of wet. I started it. Ah. There we go. Okay. I did already start this because I wanted to finish the scales on the lips. That's wet and also like around the green areas is wet. And what I need to do is do a first coat for the bushes that are more in the front ground. Um, and then I think I'll have one more sitting once that's dried. So I'm mainly just covering up this portion. So that's the first painting that I'm going to work on today. And then we'll jump on to a bunch of other pieces. But yeah guys, I started painting this and then I was like, oh wait, once we get to this point I need to start recording for a vlog because today is actually going to be a little bit less boring than most of my painting days because of how many pieces I'm going to be working on. But yeah, normally on my oil painting days I get like one or two that I work on, but today I want to get the first layers down on a bunch of different pieces and I figured that would be pretty interesting. We're not going to get a lot of detail done with them, it's just going to be like, oh, this is where I want these to go. We may not even do shading or anything, it may just be laying down the basic colors. But you'll get to see a lot more than if I was just working on one painting. Oh, also, this is going to be a time lapse, so I am recording the making of this piece along with um, one other one that I've been showing off in my vlog, the dragonfly piece. And that one is done and I need to just edit through all the footage. This one will be a while before I can get the editing done for it because this one I think has over 20, maybe 30 hours of footage to edit down. And the dragonfly one is like maybe 8 or 10. So obviously I'm going to go for the dragonfly one first. Okay, I think that's about all I can do for the bushes. They look really, really dark right now, but I'm going to add a lot of highlight when I finish them up. So it's going to kind of frame it a bit more so it won't look so dark. So these bushes are gonna be a lot brighter than they actually are right now, and they'll probably be a different tone of green because I do want to make them stand out a little bit. So I might go more olivey and um, a little bit more yellowy. Um, except for the corners, I will leave these quite dark because I like the shadowing in the corners. So again, I need to put this somewhere safe to dry and grab the other one. Okay, okay so I'm actually going to be doing this one right here. I drew this out a little bit ago. I believe I showed this one off too, and I'm going to lay out the basic colors. This is actually going to be my first time trying on wood paneling. I hear so many other oil painters love using panel. It's more expensive, but I got this one on sale to just try it out and we'll see if it actually works better than canvas. Because I do like canvas, but they do have a lot of texture to them. Okay, so I mixed up a few initial colors for the first layers. The body is going to be more of this color, and then the shell is going to be a lot more richer in color. And I think I'm going to leave the background the kind of gray that I currently have, but I'm going to add like shadowing and stuff. And I'm going to do my best to avoid using green in this piece because I feel like I've used a lot of green recently and I want to kind of step away from it and not just keep adding that to my pieces. So yeah, this one's going to be like on the browns, reds, and uh, more earthy tones. If you're wondering why the panel is gray right now, it's because I did paint it gray using acrylics. And I just wanted a more neutral color to start off with. Okay, so far it actually takes the paint really well. And I can already see like how it's going to be easier to get more detail with this. Blending is also really good too. And I'm just doing a small spot right now. 
I'll have to look into a way to get cheap panels. I know you could actually go to Lowe's or something and get a big panel and cut it yourself. But being an apartment, I don't have saws and different things like that. I could probably get a hand saw. That would take forever and be really hard on my hands, but it won't be annoying to the neighbors. So I might look into doing that and then just getting my own gesso and stuff and primering and sanding them. I believe that's the more cost effective way to do it. Get yeah, with these lines in the background. I'm trying to keep them really straight because my idea for this piece is that he's inside of a box. Like a really tiny confined box. And it may be like a play on words, but I kind of uh, think of him in a block, like an artist block. <laughs> so he's kind of like a representation of an artist block, just kind of moving slower than normal, feeling a little stuck. I thought it was a cute representation for that. Also, the edges are easy to clean up too, because they're so sharp. Oh, what happened here? Did I scratch it? Huh. I'm not sure when that happened. Oh yeah, I love the texture of this. I can't believe it's taken me so long to try out panels. But yeah, look at how easy it's blending. I'm not really getting too much of a splotchiness effect. Granted, I am painting gray over gray, but it is doing really nice. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to add any other detail quite yet because I think I want all of this to dry. So I'm going to call this one good. So that's not bad for its first initial layer. Okay, so the filming for this is going to be a little awkward. I am basically on my kitchen floor, but I want to work on this big piece. Now I'm not going to do a time lapse on it because as you can see it's kind of hard to film. So I'm just going to film it here and there during vlogs if we do any painting and I figured I'd share it a little bit here and there with you. Okay, so here is my painting. I'm going to get a better shot at it. It is a 36 by 48 I believe and it's going to be of a mermaid sleeping in a tide pool. So yeah, I don't know what colors I want her to be yet. I do know I want her hair dark, so I did a layer of that already. And I do know that I want to give her a bit of a glowing effect, maybe around her scales and stuff like that. That way she kind of lights up the tide pool around her. I mean, I'm going to have some lights coming from where the moon would be, so it would have a little bit of highlight here and there. But yeah, I want her to be kind of like a little night light. And then I've got little fishies and stuff all around her and seaweed and stuff like that. So I'm mainly going to be focusing on the background with this piece until I decide on what I want to have her look like. Okay, so I think I've got her as much as I can in the shot. And my rug's soft, but it's not that soft, so I've got a blanket to kind of sit on. And we're going to kind of work a bit more on the sand. So this all should be dry. I did this a little bit ago. Um, it's just an initial layer to kind of mark where I wanted certain colors. So I think today I'm mainly going to work on getting the sand textured and stuff because obviously it doesn't look very realistic. So I've got a bunch of different colors and I'm going to try and lay these out where I think they should go. I need my brushes. Okay, so like I said, I wanted her to have a glowing effect, but I don't want it that bright, so I may dull that down a bit. I think what I'm going to do right now is kind of emphasize the shadows. Where is that one brush that I have? So yeah, I've been slowly kind of working on this at night when I'm bored or restless. Um, I'm trying to keep myself kind of busy because I have a bad habit of getting anxious when I have nothing to do, and this has been kind of helping me, so it's a good thing that I can't really paint this and um, do a time lapse because it gives me something to work on in my spare time to relax me. I'm one of those weird people that uh, gets anxious if they don't have something to do. So well, not weird, I, everyone is weird, but you know what I mean. I mean, it's a good trait to have to get your work done because I'm constantly wanting to do something, so I'm never just like super lazy. I mean, I have moments where it's like, oh, 
I want to do so many things that I kind of get a little bit of a block and I can't do anything, but most of the time I have to do at least something or I just go crazy. Oh, also if you guys are curious, the way I paint is a little bit different from most oil painters, if you notice. I'm not using any, like, paint thinner or anything, and I just never got into wanting to use paint thinner with my paints. I mainly just use it to clean my brushes. I hate the touch and feel of it and the smell of it and stuff, so I just don't do it. I just use it to clean the brushes. There is a type of oil technique that's similar to how I paint, but I don't think I qualify as that specific oil technique. It's called impasto, I believe. And it's basically um, not using any mediums and just doing one thick layer of paint. So like your painting takes one layer, and most oil paintings take many, many layers to get the detail that you want. So I'm kind of like that with the fact that I don't use too much medium, but um, I do use a lot of layers to get what I want. So I'll probably be working on this throughout uh, the following year and the rest of this year, of course. Maybe what I can do, since it's kind of a weird layout, because obviously I, you don't get to see much, I need to find a better way to film it than sitting on the kitchen floor, but I didn't want to put it off. I wanted to just start, and I wanted to show it to you guys, so. But yeah, maybe if I can find a different way to film it, we can use this as just something I can work on while we have like discussion videos. So if there's like things you want me to discuss with you, if there's topics that you're curious about, I've had a few questions pop up and I know I want to do a Q&A pretty soon. I'll probably put something soon if I haven't done it already. And um, maybe we can just pick specific topics instead of just like rambling on like I normally do. We can actually have one specific topic and I can just kind of paint while I talk about it. Mainly because I don't like just sitting in front of the camera and just talking to it without doing anything. I like having my hands busy. And I noticed that when I film the beginning and ends of my videos for the more put together projects, I have a hard time filming them because I feel a little awkward. But when I'm physically doing something and keeping that part of my brain busy, um, it's a lot easier for me to talk to you guys. So I think if we were to do any like topic videos, I would be working and talking about it at the same time. Kind of like a mukbang, except we would be painting instead of eating. <laughs> I don't know, let me know if you guys would like that, um, if there's any specific topics you want me to talk about in them. Um, I know some people were wanting to kind of get my like, uh, origin story, like how I got into making my art dolls and different things like that, so I could definitely do that as a video. That could be a lot of fun. I mean, I'm not like extremely interesting, but if you guys are interested in hearing it, I, I'm willing to say it. I'm willing to tell you the story. See, this is why people like painting on panels. <laughs> it's just, it's like a little springboard when you're like trying to blend and stuff. And I know I'm a little aggressive with my blending, you guys probably notice that when I paint my art doll pieces and stuff. But still, it's like... <laughs> it looks like her belly's jiggling. So my idea for the texture of the sand is to probably do a bunch of like splotching effect to make it look like individual grains. I mean, the piece is pretty large, so I gotta put a lot of detail into it. But I can't do like every individual piece of sand. So we gotta kind of give it the illusion that I did. So we're gonna do a lot of like splotching and stuff and then we can go in and paint individual tiny pebbles throughout the sand. Okay, now we're gonna start adding some green. So I wanna make it look like there's bits of like dirtier sand. So I'm gonna kind of make like little ripples and just different things like that. Because I don't wash my brushes till the end of the day, I'm gonna use this one which we used on the Carnot painting since we're already using green. And I'm just going to kind of lay out where I want it. And then I'm going to blend it in a bit more because I don't want it to be like drastic. It's just like the 
sand is slightly tinted more green. And I'm just kind of doing little areas that I think it makes sense. Nothing like super planned out. Okay, now I'm gonna take the other brush that I was using earlier and just kind of feather it in a bit. That way it looks a little bit more like part of the sand and not like resting on top of it. That's not bad. How's it looking on the camera? Oh, that looks really good. I like using the viewfinder on the camera to get a better idea of what my paintings look like because sometimes it's easier to look at it smaller on the viewfinder than to step like 10 feet back to see what it looks like. Because you want to always step back from your pieces to see what they look like from far away because sometimes when you're like right here, you can't see all the detail. It just looks like a blurry mess. But if you step back really, really far back, you can see how the details go together. Oh, also, up here, I have a circle drawn. You can't see it because I don't have the camera that up, but it's the rocks at the very top. Um, I still need to sketch out because I kind of forgot about it. I'm going to do a little crab on one of the rocks. So I've got fish all over the place, starfish and a bunch of sea creatures and stuff throughout, but I wanted to have something up here on the land that was a little bit different. Plus, it just kind of brings your eye further up so it doesn't look like the top of it is all boring and just rocks. Okay guys, I think I am done for now. This took forever. I'm really happy with how it looks. Of course, I think I'm gonna have to add a bunch of other layers and techniques to get the sand to look a little bit more realistic. But right now, it looks pretty good. It's close up, not that great, but from far away, it looks pretty good. But yeah, I got quite a bit of painting done. I worked on about three different pieces, which is pretty good for a painting day. And I think I'm gonna call it good. Um, I hear the puppers moving around right now, so I probably need to take him out or something. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!